recording or whatever, but Maroni. Um what's up? It's Weekend Weaves episode thirty seven, July thirty first, twenty twenty three. I'm Alonzo. Got my co host Jason. We're both rocking colds today, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> never <laughs> crying never stops. Um but the reason I got my cold was like I know exactly why I got mine and like the moment that I got it because like I helped my friend she um move stuff out of her apartment because she's moving to Baltimore for graduate school um and I was the only one there and it was super hot she didn't have no AC going and it was just a hot day and she lives on the third floor so I went down up and down the stairs like probably like 20 times like a bunch of times throwing stuff out putting stuff in her car to donate and i wasn't drinking water or eating so that makes you sick yeah like i get like if i don't if i go a whole day <laughs> like not taking care of myself like i would probably get sick like i was there from one to eight and i probably had like one cup of water like that entire time and like mm -hmm. i didn't eat until like nine i was really tired and then i stayed up a little later because I was on the phone with Mariah because stuff was going on with her. And I I got sick the next day. And I've been sick since Friday. So I know exactly why I'm sick. But um, I think okay, COVID okay. is making a little comeback, though. Because multiple people I know <laughs> have gotten. Multiple got people COVID I again? know have gotten COVID. Yeah, in the last like couple weeks. Another strain? I don't know if it's another strain. It might just be a seasonal thing at this point. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't know why I'm sick. I came home because, uh, you know, I went to San Francisco, and my brother was feeling under the weather, but I don't really – we weren't really in contact where, you know, we live in the same house. So I think maybe whatever he had contaminated to me, but I didn't feel, like, super bad at all. I just had a headache one day, and then I went to the gym, came back home, kind of had a little bit of a headache throughout the day. Next day felt better, just was congested. And now I just sound nasally, but other than that, I feel fine. So, yeah, I'm sneezing and so. stuff. Um, so you want to start with bleach? What were you saying about? What did I say about bleach last week? I don't remember. You're like, uh, you can't, because I was like, it's bleach and jujutsu going to carry for the seasonal animes for what is it? It's not summer. Is this summer? This is summer. This isn't, it's like fall. I mean, summer ends like next month. Let's be real. But yeah. I guess it is summer. I guess summer, it is the fall, summer. Whatever. Yeah. I guess it's the summer selection of shows. So I was saying, is Jujutsu and uh, Bleach just going to carry? And you're like, nah, I don't think so. And you're like, you're really liking Zom because it makes you feel stuff. And it's like a lot more relatable, even though it's a zombie apocalypse. But like some of the stuff that happens in general just is more relatable than, you know, what happens in Jujutsu Kaisen and Bleach. But I was going to say this episode for me, I feel like it didn't hold as much weight as it should have, or it, it was supposed to, because I didn't watch the original, you know, series when it first came out. I watched some of it. Like I understand the, who the characters are and what's going on, but like, I feel like we were supposed to feel more about the dog dude and, I just wasn't feeling the feels for it. Say his name. <laughs> Say so, his name. He's and it was dog interesting. Dude. It's <laughs> not dog dude. It's not dog dude. No, his name is Komamura or like Sanjin or something. I just, I have to look it up. He's not one of my favorite characters. So like, I forget his name. It's Sanjin. It was cool. It was cool. Last, you know, part one of this season when he went to go talk to the head of his clan or whoever that the giant dog was. Big and dog. He, yeah, and he was like, we outcast, or you left because you found disgrace in us, and you hid your face, and you helped the Soul Reapers or whatever, and he was, like, banished from the clan, but he came back mm -hmm. because he realized, you know, once he lost his Bankai, you know, he needs something else to continue to fight, so he went to him to ask for their secret technique, and we figure out or find out what their secret technique is, which I'm still kind of confused about, because um, okay. it, it was like... Our human form, like once you relinquish, because they're werewolves, that's really what they are. And I, I'm assuming he was saying in the past, we, I guess, terrorized humanity. <laughs> so our punishment was we're stuck in dog forms and we were subject to like exile or something like that. 
I could be way off, but that's what I was getting from when he was talking to him. I got to look at it because I don't remember, but you can continue. That's what I was getting from it. Um, it says and it's then, punishment for the sins they committed while alive. So whatever that means. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I was like, okay, you know, that's pretty cool. Some, you know, some lore, some werewolf lore. And then he was like, once you transform to a human, you like store, you give, you have to rip out your heart and leave it here. And then your body becomes like an immortal vessel that you can just use in your inhuman form up until, I guess you, I don't know, like Probably get your revenge. Run out of or, spirit energy. Uh, yeah, maybe that was it. But he was like, it made it seem like it was just infinite. And that, then when he said that, I was like, okay, so this dude is just going to like be able to just fight anybody for however long, basically. But then it was like once, like you said, he ran out of spirit energy during the episode, but it seemed like he was like, once you get your revenge or whatever, then your body just turns to a dog completely and you lose any ability to communicate like a human and everything. So you just basically turn into a full fledged dog. But I don't I'm, I'm pretty sure his mind is still there because he was still talking like it was giving us his like inner inner monologue after he turned into a dog. He was like, was it worth it? And it went to flashbacks of uh, it was a guy who was working with Eisen who was um. Right. You know, one of his, his teammates so, or whatever. Yeah, before you continue, let me update you on where I am on, like, the Bleach manga. So, like, I just got done with the Aizen arc. Um, mm-hmm. That dude is crazy. I just got done with, <laughs> with the Aizen arc. Um, I just wanted to clear up some things, add some context to the story, since I'm, like, I have to be the Bleach historian for the show so that we can know what's going on. Um, so like the Eisenhart arc, the Urahara, he wasn't, I know we were talking about Urahara comparing him to the other scientists guy. Urahara wasn't actually like a conducting like human experiments. Yeah. He didn't actually conduct those experiments. He was framed by Eisen. So like he never actually did any like inhumane experiments. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's the thing. But he but, did but, create the Hoagie Q though, right? Yeah. He created that. Okay. But that's not, but, like, bad. That's not inherently bad. But no, it's only it bad was when Eisen was trying to use it. Right. Okay, and Eisen okay. also created one of those, but his, like, failed. Okay, okay. Before. Um, thing. But Eisen's just, like, he's, like, a true villain. Like, he's so funny. Um, like, he's, like, one of those characters He wants to that become were, God, like, bro. Right. He wants to be the soul but king. But he was, like, so, <laughs> like, warped and, like, he was just, like, funny. Because, like, every time someone would do something, first of all, he took on... I thought that during this arc, like... Didn't he fight, like, all the captains and yes. win? Yes. Like, I thought, like, during, like, the Quincy arc, like, was the first time the captains just got, like, overwhelmed and, like, showed how... No, Eisen was him. I knew that. But I knew Eisen, that. like... Yeah, I knew Eisen was him. All of them. <laughs> I, knew, I knew he was him. That's what I did know. <laughs> I know, like, his, his Bankai, he can, like, warp reality to make it seem like... It's right. crazy. It's like an Inception kind of thing. But even, like... Besides that, like he was just so powerful, even without using that power, like he was just like that powerful for some reason. Um, but yeah, to add context to this with Tozen, which is the guy in the flashback that he was saying was his friend that died, and he like made the same mistake that he did, like he didn't follow yeah, his own advice. He was out for revenge too, right? Right. He was like you need to stop. Like Tozen it won't get you anything. He was a blind black captain. Um, of the court guard and he went with Aizen during the Aizen arc um, and he betrayed all the captains obviously and like his thing was like his um, friend had died before he had become like a captain in his whole society he, before he even like joined them um, the court guards his friend died and like they had joined the court guards and they died and then he wanted to get revenge for them because he felt like the world was like unjust basically and he was all about like justice and stuff like that so he mm-hmm. joined he ended up joining up with Aizen to just create like a world that of world peace. Yeah. yeah like he didn't want to fight and his whole thing was like if you don't under if you're not afraid of your own sword like you don't understand like what fighting truly means like you should fear your own weapon and fighting and stuff like that well, um, yeah, they definitely felt that later on when they <laughs> tried to come and kill him. For sure. <laughs> um, and then he had this whole thing where he was fighting during that final scene before he died. And 
he turned into like his hollow form and he could see for a little bit and then he ended up getting stabbed by the guy with like the 69 like tattoo on his mm-hmm. face because he was part six, of nine. the squad. Yeah, 6'9". <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like Shue or something. So, yeah, and then he was he got stabbed in the back while he was fighting um, the dog captain because the dog captain and him were like best friends. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And then he like blew up. Like after they defeated him, they were like having like a heart to heart and he was like, come closer. I want to see your face because like he was blind the whole time. Like he had never seen them before. And, <laughs> and then, he was trying to set him up. They no, kill him no. too. And then oh, Isaac okay, okay. blew him up. <laughs> oh, I, th- I thought he was like trying to suicide bomb. Like, no, no. If I'm gonna die, <laughs> this is my last chance. No, he was just laying there. <laughs> and then they were like talking to him, and like he was getting his last words out, and then he just like exploded. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Um, but just to add context to him and um the dog guy Komamura's character. Okay. Cool, cool. Uh, his bankai was pretty cool, though. Um, after he took the armor off, it was like the armor was his life energy, and he has no life energy when his armor is gone, so the Quincy's powers couldn't work because she can turn anything that comes in contact with her Rechi or whatever becomes a bomb. It was like she wasn't yeah. blowing stuff up. She was turning whatever came in contact into a bomb, and he was like, there's no life energy here, so this won't hurt me. Even though he was still getting like blown up on his body, but then that's when he explained like this body is just a vessel. It's like Im- immortal. I'm not really here. I don't. I'm not really taking any damage. Yeah, like he doesn't have a life to lose. He already is like yeah. He's he just like gave a, it away. a shell of like reishi or whatever, like spirit energy. Yeah, and then uh, I'm assuming that's how that that dog lives forever. Though he just eats the hearts of other people. He was like, "Thank you for this gift." without Maybe, you i, I wouldn't know. be able to live or something he said something along those lines and then he ate his art and then yeah i don't think i've seen the dog so far I'm oh reading. in the uh in the manga they yeah. I, they probably don't talk about it because i think that's the first time they showed him like last season part one when he went to go back and talk to him i don't think they really touched on his heritage or who he was yeah i think don't. people just knew he was a humanoid dog <laughs> and that was it because remember he used to wear a mask and then he stopped wearing a mask uh what was it when they were trying to save what's her face rukia that's yeah. when he took his mask off for the first time yeah i'm pretty sure even though that's the first time we see him too but but yeah and then he just stopped wearing his helmet but i don't think anybody ever asked him i'm pretty sure they knew like context of who he is and why he's like that but i don't think the viewers knew i don't think there was any extra dialogue about it nah there wasn't ever since yeah but ever since the yeah the soul society invasion arc everyone we knew he was a dog we just didn't yeah. know why he's a dog <laughs> for dog, yeah but um yeah that happened but the episode was pretty cool the fight was decent um it was all right he's not yeah, really... that's why i said it was decent the cgi yeah. bankai freaking giant dude was like ah all right this okay yeah, and he was there. just swinging it wasn't really any action but the the wrestling dude though he was fighting a little bit <laughs> at the end of the- <laughs> yeah at the that very was end. funny like, he I was like get up, get up his little his little like partner or referee yeah, like- that's he was like get up he was like the, the underdog or something the, the superstar never loses and then he was like just popped right up like Undertaker. Yeah. <laughs> just stood up. And they were like, what? And he, he said one round. Like, English words, and that's just what made me laugh. Yeah. He's pretty cool. He, even though he didn't use any Quincy stuff, he was just, maybe he, he has like Quincy infused attacks or something, but it looked like he was just literally body slamming them. <laughs> yeah, he's just power them. bombing them, dropping just elbows. Power bombing them. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I wasn't taking that fight funny, but it has like Ikaku and. Shuhei, like the six nine guy in it, so that's why it's funny. Yeah, that they're fighting him. Um, and the thing about them is they're really powerful. Yeah, but they didn't use their bankai's against him at all. They didn't use. Nah. So I was like, I I, I found that kind of weird, especially after, because they started fighting them before the hollow pills were sent out by uh, Urahara, and then when they sent them out, I was like, okay, maybe they're gonna use their bankai because they don't have any. You know, it's not gonna get taken. They don't have to. You know, worry about it about losing it but they just kept fighting them normally but i guess it was working so they were like we don't need to use it but then he popped back up and just like one shot at all of them 
All right. And one thing I think that was like more subtle that I want to know more about is like oh um, why the girls don't like her. The other not ones? why they don't like her, but why she got beat and then the girls come and they're like, "We'll help you." And, and then she's, she's like, no, like, no, don't, help. don't do it. So, like, I wonder, are they going to, like, absorb her or something? Maybe like, they like the vibe. Maybe they're they all, gives. like, personalities of one person. Maybe. And then they fuse together to become a one. And that could be a stretch. But because it seemed was... like she was very just one's, like, her idea. Like, the way she acted, it was no emotion to it. It was just, like, the same all over. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It, it, like, it was a split personality from a from one person and this is the emotion that she is i got that could be a reach like crazy but that's what it felt like to me and the, the only reason i don't think it's like special to her is because like ishida also like popped up on a couple different like quincy's that were def- like defeated or like dying like the mm-hmm. robot quincy and um a different one so i want to know like i feel like it has something to do with like they're just gonna like absorb them or something no take their that's power what I feel. that's just yeah. what i'm predicting i don't know though um wait is she the popped up on a robot dude though i wouldn't that happen last episode the episode we just episode? watched wait. like it was he it showed was, up to the robot guy and was like it's okay now or something like that after he was destroyed it was something like i don't think she even said anything it was just like the robot said like i'm 45 percent recovered or something and like ashita like popped through the shadows Okay, Wait, I gotta go this? back. I don't remember that. This this is not none of this happened. This that didn't happen. Them sitting like kneel yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, that's new. So yeah, um, but yeah, it doesn't. The Ashita part doesn't even look like it's in the manga. But like, I don't think that happened. I don't remember seeing that. No, it happened. He popped up out of the shadow. It was right before they popped. The girls popped up on the. Um, oh, okay. The girl. Okay. Okay. So I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be. Something. I think I was wrong about uh, Ichigo getting that power up too, because that's not what that was. I guess it was just all. I'm pretty sure. This is my prediction. I'm pretty sure Ichigo is going to become the Soul King at the end of this arc. Really? That's my because it was like he was walking and then he was like, "Are you a vessel that's strong enough to hold all of the responsibility, or are you a bowl that will shadow like that will shatter?" And then um, I said shadow. <laughs> that will that will shatter and then after that he like absorbed everything he was seeing all of everything happening and he was just screaming and his right. body was like imploding or like exploding and bubbling up and then it just went back to him being normal and then it showed some girl sitting down and he was like what el- whatever else you need me to do i'm ready for it so i'm pretty sure he got to the end of the road or he's like having an internal vision right now <laughs> But um, I think he's going to become the Soul King or he's going to be able to have the Soul King's power for a period of time to help them win this war. But I, that's what I think is going to happen. Okay. And then um, that's when I was like, ah, this episode for me didn't really do much. Yeah, I feel like the big part was um, Kamamura, but like I wasn't like I'm not really a big fan of his. So like yeah. seeing him. Like his power was cool. Like he had a cool power up, but and it was short ended. Really like he, I don't think he died though. I don't think he died. I think he just got turned to a dog, and he can't be a human anymore. He's just a full I mean, fledged like, dog. What does that mean for him now, though? Like he's not really him if he's just a dog. I mean, he is him. He can still think. Like he was having. He was talking to himself. I think he's just a human trapped in a dog's body. That sounds terrible, <laughs> man. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> it probably would suck, but I mean, he can still. I mean, if you he know, can talk, I guess it's not the worst. They can give him those buttons. <laughs> the buttons, like they all. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like it's the like, dog. They press the button. Like, Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Food. All right. <laughs> no, that would suck. <laughs> it would suck. I mean, it's better than dying, though. He can still run around. He can still move, and I mean, that's his true form. Yeah, I kind of feel bad for him though, because like. He I mean, just wanted like, to kill. He sacrificed Yowich. his. He didn't life. even get to fight Yawich. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like he sacrificed his like life to get beat revenge, someone he that didn't wasn't even, get even the fight. person he was yeah. trying to beat. Yeah, that does suck. 
I was hoping he would get be, at least be able to get to the castle and see him. Yeah. And then transform back. But, but somebody scooped him up. He's like, all right, let's go, Captain. Yeah, the glasses guy. I forgot his name. Um, I think the only other thing is this with um. I forgot which letter Quincy this is, but the guy outside of the second in command, basically the guy who was um outside the little force oh, yeah, the barricade she put up. And did we talk um, about that last episode? How he was like, you should have just showed everybody else how to do this, even though it would have yeah. been perfect. It would have been better than you perfecting it and only one person being able to use it. Yeah, we talked about that. I think. Okay, okay. And then he just left. He's like, yeah, I'll be back. He's like, all right, I'll be waiting. <laughs> For when you're ready to fight. That's the thing with this guy. He's always like he always gets like the chill fight. This yeah, but he's right also here. fighting like the top person. Yeah. But he always he always gets like the coolest person to fight of like the enemy faction. Yeah. Like they're yeah. like when he was doing the Eisen arc, the guy that he fought was like um he was like number one. He wasn't the strongest, he was like second strongest because Yami was number zero. Um, but he was like really is that who it was no that's who uh, Ichigo fought right wait yeah yeah, Yokora or you is it Yukiora or Yokora I think it's Yukiora that's who he fought though yeah Ichigo fought him okay and Grimjow well Ichigo fought a lot of people but yeah yeah. I mean he fought everybody damn near so (laughs) that was like (laughs) that was yeah the last fight in Hukomando was Yokora or Yukiora whatever it is um but the guy he fought was like really chill. Like they didn't even want to fight each other, really. Like they were avoiding mm. fighting each other the whole time. And then the guy was like, um, "Well, it looks like I gotta fight you." He's like, "Yeah, I know. Sucks. I wish we could just leave, honestly. <laughs> but we have to fight each other." So it's always funny with him. And then these three are always in dumb shit, and they're always funny. And then the guy with um the flower, like the pretty boy, um guy that's with them. His mm-hmm. Bankai is actually really good, but he doesn't use it because it's um in their like squad, like it's it's ran by like Kimpachi and like it's frowned upon to use Oh like, to use a, Bankai, right? Well not to use Bankai, to be oh, okay, to okay. use like a like how do I say it? Like an ability type Bankai. Like brute force is more like the vibe of like their squad. And if you use, like, an ability-type sword, it's, like, frowned upon. Okay, Because, like, okay. his Bankai is, like, it just, like, it's like a tree. Not, like, a tree. But, like, it, like, captures you, and then it just, like, pause, like, sucks out your energy. <laughs> sucks out your, <laughs> your um, power. Okay. It's like a siphon. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, like, he doesn't use it often like he's only used it like twice and he doesn't like to use it because like it's frowned upon so he's only used it when it was like in complete secret like no one saw it okay and then ikaku also has a good bankai but he doesn't usually use it because he doesn't want everyone to know about his bankai because he doesn't want to get promoted to captain because he wants to fight under kenpachi but yeah that's I think that's everything about this episode for the most part. Um It was alright. I feel like Yeah, it was it was it was okay, yeah. I feel like once Ishigo returns to the fight, it'll get a lot more hype for me. Because um, the characters like the captains, they're like okay, but they're not like my favorite characters. Yeah. Like I like Kimpachi and Biakia and when the when the head captain showed up though yeah that was that was crazy that was crazy yeah that was crazy even though he was fighting a clone and got clapped but right, right. <laughs> that's so crazy that's funny so because he, he also got beat by in the Eisen arc too I forgot he even fought during that yeah that's crazy bro and the reason he's captain is because no one has come in a thousand years who's stronger than him Apparently, but he keeps that's why losing. He's captain, but he's lost twice and died. Yeah. But <laughs> at least you get to see. It's like they show how powerful he is, but like they don't yeah. give him like a W. Yeah. Still, but we did see back in the day what he was doing. So 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. When he killed all the freaking yeah, all Quincy's, the Quincy's. <laughs> that was piles crazy. of bodies. That was crazy. Um, but let me describe Veroni Kenshin here. Oh yeah, my prediction for Bleach. I think that the people that lost their battles are gonna get absorbed somehow. Like they're just gonna like take in their power for some reason because they don't like tolerate losing or something. Um, but for Roni Kenshin, Jason didn't watch the episode, so I'm gonna just describe it summary. Yeah, sorry um, guys, I forgot. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, so here's what happens. Okay, so that's unimportant. So okay, yeah, the girl who runs the shop, um, she finds a painting by her grandfather because her grandfather was a swordsman and also like a painter it's like an ink painting that looks really good and she like comes out in the beginning of the episode and she's like look like i found this painting um it's probably it's gonna be worth like a lot of money i'm gonna sell it my grandfather made it so like we're gonna have some money so then she s says i'm gonna take you guys out for dinner it's on me we're gonna go to a fancy place so then they go uh, to this place, and then the fighter guy is here with the bandana. Um, and these three people right here, um, they were democratic activists. So, like, I had to look up a little bit about, like, imperialism this episode because they kept talking about imperialism and democracy. Um, so, like, Kenshin, he was part of the imperialist army that took over japan revolutionary army whatever it was and like imperialism i guess just means when you take over a territory by force like military power or something mm -hmm. like that so he was part of that revolutionary army that took over um and that's just part of his character description but these guys they're just democratic activists they were just in the restaurant like drunk just like talking really loud like everyone was looking at them and they were just talking about like democracy the whole time and then one of them threw a vase or a glass bottle or something because they were trying to hit like one of each other and then ac accidentally hit Kenshin and then the lady that works there was like hey like you guys are like being rowdy they need to leave. Hurt someone. yeah basically that's what she said <laughs> <laughs> and then the big dude was about the uh punch her in the face because he was like what and then he was about to punch her and then the bandana guy comes and he's like saves her basically like he moves her out of the way and he's mm -hmm. like what are you doing and then the big dude gets mad and then they challenge each other to a fight so they go outside and then the big dude is carrying like this secret weapon like he's going in for a punch on the bandana dude and he's carrying i forgot what it's called i don't know what the, what it is it's probably like equivalent to like brass knuckles but it was like circular and like on his wrist i guess and he punches him, and then it goes through his hand because, like, his head is so hard or something. Like, he just, like, injures himself. And then he's like, I don't even need to, like, use my full power to beat you. Like, I'll just f beat you with one finger. So then the dude runs in, and he flicks him in the forehead, and then he gets knocked out like that. And then his man tries to pull his sword out, and then Kenshin steps in. He's like, you know, you're pulling blades out, like. If this was just a regular drunk fight, I wouldn't step in, but, you know, you can't do that. So then Kenshin gets behind him, and then dude puts his sword back, and then they all run off because they're scared. Mm -hmm. um, that happens, and then Bandana Dude turns out to be a higher, like a hired fighter, I guess. It's not really an assassin, because they, they didn't go out of their way to say assassin. Like a mercenary. Yeah, but he just, like, fights people. He doesn't kill them. Um mm -hmm. So then he gets hired by the people from the first episode that were pretending to be Kenshin. Um, like the old dude and the big dude. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they hire him and they're like, I thought they got guy. put in prison. They're they still did, around. But they escaped. They oh, escaped okay, prison. okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, they, <laughs> they were like, I hate Kenshin so much. Like, that's how much I hate him. Like, I escaped prison. Like, that's what he says. So then he hires, and this guy, he just really likes to fight. And, like, um, he really wants to find, like, skilled fighters to fight. So it's, like, a challenge. So he's Goku. Yeah, basically. So then <laughs> they're, like, you'll really like like this fight. Like, they tell him 
they tell Mm -hmm. him who Kenshin really is, like his revolutionary, like army background, like who he was. And then um, there's this funny scene where like he dresses up like him for a second. It was really funny. Uh, So they hire him. He goes to fight Kenshin and then at the dojo or whatever. Um, Mind you, he already challenged Kenshin to a fight the first time they met. Right, but now he's but, like, I really want to, now that I know who he is. Yeah, so then he comes to the dojo, he pulls up, and then he explains to Kenshin, like, like drop the act, like, I know who you are, like, your first job was to be an assassin, and then your second job was, like, to protect this army or kingdom or royal force or whatever it was, like, and that's what you're known for, like, I know who you are, and, like, the kid didn't know that that was Kenshin's background, so he was, like, surprised mm-hmm. at first. Um so then, yeah, that happens. He's like, and, what? He's him. He's yeah. really him. <laughs> and then Kenshin <laughs> is like, um, okay, like, I'll fight you. And the two guys are, like, hiding behind, like, they're, like, dojo gates. And he's like, I already know that Kenshin's going to beat him. Because, like, come on, it's impossible to beat him. Like, he's, like, literally a legend. But, like, yeah. he's at least going to put up a fight and hurt him. So, like, when Kenshin's vulnerable i'm gonna pull out a gun and shoot him (laughs) 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 that's what he said and then so um kenshin's like you know i know you guys are back there he just cut the bullet no no no. oh okay he he's like i know you guys are hiding back there like he accepts the fight and he's like Mm -hmm. i know you guys are back there so then they come out like stop hiding um and then this guy the bandana dude's like um i know what you guys are planning to do He's like, hand it over. And he's like, what were you talking about? And then he like takes his gun out of his shirt and then he like tosses it up in the air and then crushes it between his knuckles, like obliterates it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, you know what's crazy about like stuff like this? It's always super serious. I bet I didn't watch it, but I bet when I do go and watch it, it's not gonna feel it's gonna feel serious, but it's like you know it's not serious. Like when he's about to pull the gun out, it's like yeah. a tone. You know how shows do that? Like it's such a serious moment that's about to happen and like it's a dire situation. But since you know it's an anime or a cartoon, it's like it's not about to happen. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not even yeah. <laughs> so it's like it becomes funny. It becomes funny more so than stressful. Yeah, they're also funny characters. So like I already yeah. know nothing they do is gonna work. Um but yeah, they crush he crushes the gun and he's like, Let's get away from this dojo, let's go to river because my weapon is like too big for like this dojo. Let's go by the river and fight. So they go, and this dude pulls out his fucking Zanpak toe out of his raft. <laughs> he pulls out That's his cloud gi- sword, man. That's cloud yeah. sword. <laughs> he pulls out his giant sword, which is like it's really blunt. He's like, I can't cut anything with it, but like, I can like demolish. Like I can like mm-hmm. blunt force you to death, basically. And then they're like, What? That's like a legendary sword or whatever. And then they're, and then Kenshin's like, okay, let's fight. And then they start fighting. This guy swings at Kenshin. Kenshin dodges it. And then he's like, what? He's behind me? And then Kenshin hits him. Obviously, he doesn't, like, slice him in half. He probably hits him, like, the blood of his sword or something. But he, like, goes mm-hmm. flying, like, like 20 feet. And then there's a bunch of smoke. And then the kid's like, yes, like, he got him. And then he just, like, steps out of smoke, like, unharmed. And then that was the end of the episode. Okay. So, yeah, that is everything that helped happen. Um, I think the most, like, interesting thing was this guy's background. um, Because Kenshin asked him, like, why are you always, like, fighting people? Like, what is your, like, how did you Mm -hmm. get to this point where you're just, like, fighting people for fun? And he had, like, a little flashback of, like, somebody in, like, a purple, like, suit. Or not suit, but, like, uniform look like a fighter of some kind and he was like that doesn't matter or something like that just know that mm-hmm. i hate imperialists and then that was it so okay, it, okay. it probably has something to do with the revolution of some kind okay okay yeah, that was it um imperialism is i don't know take it how you want it <laughs> I had to look up imperialism because I was like, what is imperialism? Um, And like, I wanted, like, I guess a modern day um, example would be like China and Taiwan. That's like what I thought of when I first read the description. 
Mm-hmm. Like they're trying to like take, they're trying to like add Taiwan to China, basically like not make it like an independent place, but like make it a part of China through military force. And like Taiwan is fighting back, and then we're also America is like aiding Taiwan to like fight back. So like that's that's like an example of like imperialism that I could think of. Wait, say that again. You said Taiwan's trying to take over China. What? No, China's trying to take over Taiwan. Take over Taiwan. Okay, and that's They're currently trying... happening right now. Right. And yeah. like, I need to, I need to start watching the news, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't watch the news at all. <laughs> I mean, you know, I know. I obviously you were just looking it up for this, but you know, like, I don't know what's going on in the. World. I mean, I know some stuff that's going on in the world, but like outside of my little bubble, bro, I'd be. No, I feel that. I'd be chilling, man. I'd be I listen chilling. to a lot of podcasts. So that's, I get some news from that. Like, sometimes I hear about something and I'll look it up. Because um, that's, like, real news. You know what I'm saying? Not, like, stuff that's local news. Like, yeah, a kid lost his bike today. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I don't... <laughs> that's, that's real world news. Like, just what's going on. And it's good to know. Even though it's not really affecting you, it's just good to know what's going on, what's happening. You know? Right. The China-Taiwan thing's been happening for a while, though. So. Then what else is, not to go off on a tangent, but did you see any of the alien stuff? Yeah, I did. I did see the alien stuff. I saw the guy at the presser or whatever at the court hearing. She was like, can you confirm that there were biological substances of like non-human? He was like, yes, I can confirm. (laughs) And then (laughs) it was just like, uh, he. I guess they were like, yeah, we have uh, alien aircrafts and something else but my whole thing is like i seen a map right that it was a map showing of where all the ufo sightings are at (laughs) and more than like 90 percent of them are in the u.s and only the u.s compared to like every other country in this planet like there's a few if i can find it i'll send it to you but it was like only ufo sightings seen are in the u.s like nowhere else is really reporting ufo sightings like this and then two i feel like I definitely do. I, I I think I'm a firm believer that aliens exist, not in the sense of like green people come to our planet and stuff like that, but in the sense of the universe is so fast and so big, like it's in impo- it's, it's more likely that there's not another planet like ours in the universe than there is, or, or there there is like you get what I'm saying. Like there's more. It's more likely that there's another planet just like ours somewhere in the galaxy or in the universe, rather than there not being one and we're the only planet with living you know beings. Right. So I believe in aliens in the sense of that. Uh, if they did make it to Earth and they're from a different planet, I doubt they would get captured by the U.S. Um, <laughs> that's what I think. At least, I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping. But if you can travel across space to another planet, you know how advanced your technology has to be. And for you to get captured, or e- and even if you do get captured, for you to get captured and not be able to, like, kill the people that captured you like it would have been more convincing if it was like aliens arrived on the planet we tried to stop them and they whooped our ass and now they're gone (laughs) more so than aliens arrived on our planet we captured them and we kept the secret you know what i'm saying like i I don't know that's just to me it doesn't make sense but it's interesting uh i don't want to be like a a conspiracist or a conspiracy theorist or anything like that because people are like oh this is just a distraction because something else bigger is happening so they're putting this out so people are distracted, um, which I think is some some like that happens some, from time to time. I don't think on the grand scale that people say it does, but I, I definitely think there's, you know, agendas for stuff like that. Like, oh, we got to distract the general masses because something else is happening. I don't know what that is or what it could be. Uh, but, yeah. Hey, man. I'm not I, I feel like it would be. Like I feel like there's definitely should be aliens or some just like life outside of Earth. I feel yeah. like it has to be a thing. Cause like I feel like it's just too coincidental for us to be the only place with life just in the entire universe. Yeah. But I did I have seen like maps like that where you're saying with like the alien sightings and like it is like very much just America <laughs> and like a lot of it just like in rural areas in America <laughs> so like I don't really know if I believe if people say they've seen aliens or not but 
I don't know. I just wanted to see if you saw any news about it. Because apparently there's like a video from Las Vegas, but I haven't watched it. Yeah, I saw that. It was like a giant green thing or some giant light in the sky and it crashed in somebody's backyard and then the police were like, what's uh, what's back there? And then he was the police were like, don't go back there, even though it was his own backyard or something. Like they were trying to hide something. I don't know. It was a weird video. I don't know if that's the one you're referencing, but I seen a video like that, like I want to say a month or two ago. I think so, yeah. That. <laughs> okay. Let's, uh... How'd you feel about JJK? Oh, yeah. Amazing episode. Episode of the week by far. Uh, to me. I don't know if you're going to feel the same. What did you, uh, you like about it? Uh, the fight. The fight the fight between Toji and, and Ghetto was really good. Um, we also got information about... So the Heavenly Restriction works just like you know, curse techniques, if you explain them, they get stronger. Um, because when they started fighting, you know, he was, well, <laughs> at first when they started fighting, he just sent his dragon at him and then his dragon like captured him in his mouth and he was just shooting bullets back at him <laughs> while he was in the dragon's mouth. And then, and then he hopped off the dragon. It was like sliding down a building and then they ended up, in like the houses or I don't know what that place is down there. I know that's where Tangan is at, but it seemed like it Just was like a big dojo and, or something. Yeah. And so they were walking and, and ghetto kind of lost them through like the scuffle and all the, the commotion after they landed and told you just explain it to him. Like, yeah, you know, I don't have any cursed energy. Um, I'm basically an invisible man. That's how I got into the school and I was able to sneak attack, you know, uh, that's so crazy. I just forgot his name. Like, it's always like that. As soon as you think about Gojo. something, you just forget his name. Yeah, Gojo. I snuck attack Gojo, and that's how I got in because I have no cursed energy. So I'm like the invisible man. Uh, nobody can see me or sense me. And then he was like, I also, since I have no cursed energy, I have, you know, amplified physical strength. And then Ghetto is like, stop talking because... I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to explain your thing to me so you become even stronger. Even though it's like crazy because he still beat him easily pretty much without increasing his his uh, you know, his heavenly restriction or whatever. And then Ghetto starts shooting <laughs> shooting like the floor at the top of the ceiling cuz he's like, "Oh, I found him." And then he's just behind him just looking at him. He's like, "Yeah, I'm not there." And then he's like, "Uh, that little curse that I have with me is like a bag and I can store all my cursed uh items in there." And what I do is I can shrink him down and I swallow him and then he's and then he's inside my intestines. So since he's so small, I can walk around with him and store all my weapons and items. And then when I need him, I just basically throw him back up and then he grows and then he wraps around me and then I can pull out whatever, you know, item I need, and, which I thought was really cool. And I was kind of I was right about um him taming it like it's it's a they said it's a uh servant master relationship which yeah i guess you can say that's what pets are <laughs> it sounds so bad to say but that's you know like that's yeah, basically what pet. pets are yeah it's a pet <laughs> yeah so uh i was right about that um which is pretty cool and told you overall is just a cool character uh so they're fighting some more and then we see all the ghettos curse curse manipulations and and curses he has that he's been using, like he used the dragon. The dragon got clapped. He pulled out a sword that just cut it in half, like it was freaking butter. And then yeah, Mappa Ghetto did some was like freestyling too. Oh, you on the uh, animation compared to what was in the yeah in the uh because like, he didn't he cut didn't, it in half. He didn't, no, he did cut it in half. He didn't do the he didn't shoot first, like when it was carrying him. Oh yeah, and like in the At manga, the they stay like in the same kind of area. Yeah. But in the anime, like, they, like, drop down. Like, he, like, knocks out, like, the floor or whatever it was, like, the railing. And then they, like, they, like yeah. fall and stuff like that. Yeah, they were in a hallway. That hallway was just fall free-falling. Did yeah. that happen in the manga or no? No, that doesn't happen. Okay, so they were just free-falling. And then that's when the, the one curse pops up, the girl with, the like, the bandages and stuff. And she's like, am I pretty? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was like, I'm going to be brutally honest. You're not my type. And then uh, Ghetto explained, basically, it causes non-violence. Like, they can't fight each other at all until they answer her questions. 
Uh, and he was like, all right, um, let me answer the questions to see how this technique really works. And then when he answered with, I guess, a, a answer that the, you know, the curse doesn't like, it'll attack you. Like they didn't show all of this in the, in the animation. It was just like snip, snip, snip. And then his ear was bleeding and his, like a little bit of his hair was cut off and he was like, okay, I see how it works. And then he pulled out a sword, the, uh, re- the reverse, it was like yeah. heavenly reversal. What's the name of that sword reverse, again? I think it's like reverse cursed sword. I think it had like a crazy, like cool name too, but he pulled that out and he just like, shink, 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 shink. <laughs> yeah. just breaks it and then uh that's when ghetto is like all right dang this dude is you know pretty good and then he was well, like he has when... no curse energy so this this little thing should be like, like a low grade curse and i should be able to just absorb it without having to like make it submit and then what i was thinking before you sent me like the manga panel with the author notes or whatever explaining what happened yeah i thought that Toji, even though he has no curse energy, I thought that thing was a high grade curse, but he's just so him that he was able to tame it, regardless uh, of what you know, like what it was. But no, it just so happens they had like a a relationship already. I guess the relationship was stronger than um than what was needed to cause us to submit, which is I think it's still kind of weird. Like even though, because based on what Ghetto was saying, I still feel like even if there's a curse that's that's already has an owner, if it really is that weak and I'm this strong, I should be able to just force it to, you know, come to me. But I guess the bond is is, is that yeah, strong. I think the tight bond is how they explain why he can't do it. And, like, the re- I thought originally, I didn't even think that hard about it. I thought Toji was just so fast, he just, like, hit him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like he just stopped it. Yeah, no, I thought for me, I thought it was like I thought it was just like that strong, and he couldn't do it because he was like, "What?" <laughs> when it didn't work, he was like, "What?" <laughs> and See, then, like, it's, um, it hits his hand his way. I thought it was Toji that hit his hand away, but it mm-hmm. was the spirit itself. And so, then after that, he just like slices his chest, and yeah. <laughs> Just and then he kicks him in the head and he also says you guys really let a monkey outdo you like a, a <laughs> non curse energy monkey like me was able to do this like you guys should be ashamed or something like that and then he kicked him in the head and then uh he was like i couldn't kill you because if i killed you all the curses that you have would probably just run wild and that would be more of a you know problem than this yeah. And this is where I think, I mean, I'm pretty sure this is where the shift happens with Ghetto's, like, ideologies and when he's, like, all, like, these people are just monkeys, they're useless. I think him losing to him and him killing, uh, what's her name, really changed how he feels about regular humans or, but it's, like, weird because he has no cursed energy. I guess that's the whole thing. He wants sorcerers. He feels like the whole world should be sorcerers because that way it'll, you know, get rid of... I don't know, like Just a power like balance weak or people weak people, but it's like matter. this dude is so strong, even though he has no curse energy. Uh, yeah. But I think he's just hateful towards because of what what Toji did, and so yeah, and I think he subconsciously heard him say it, even though he was knocked out. And I think that's that that's when it becomes like his uh a part of his vocab calling people monkeys. Um, that might be. Oh, and no, he just I'm walks st- out and he shows up to the uh star plasma vessel people. He's like, Yeah, here's the body. All right, give me the money. And he was like, the dude was like, uh, I actually didn't think you were gonna be able to do it. But now that you did it, yeah, you can have anything you want. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, You know the world bonus. might end. Yeah, they gave him a bonus. He's like, You know the world might end. He was like, I don't care. We're gonna see our God ex- ascend, and if that means we die with him, it's whatever. Like, that's what we want. And then uh, <laughs> he was in the background like, these people are fucking crazy. <laughs> like, the and then his uh, his agent, the middleman guy, was like, all right. They walk out. Um, and he's like, you should, you know, we should, we got all this money. You should take me to one of the restaurants. You take our clients. And he was like, I'll never spend time with you outside of work. The only time I'll see you is in hell or at work. And then he just leaves. And then uh, told you, was like, he didn't really say anything. He was just like, ah, okay, whatever. <laughs> he just started walking away. And then Himothy shows up. <laughs> uh, oh, you're saying he was him. <laughs> yeah, he was him, yeah. Oh, okay. I mean Toji's him too. They're both him. <laughs> but Gojo's just just really him. So Gojo shows up and he's like I think he was like long time no see or something like that. Or 
Yeah. Something yeah, along those lines. Long time, see. And then he was like, what the heck? <laughs> this dude's alive? And he was like, you don't realize what you just did, I was but I'll explain was it like, to what you. The hell? <laughs> he was like, you don't realize what you did, but I'll explain it to you. After you stabbed me, like, you made me really connect with curse energy and figure out like the essence of curse energy and he was like when you when you stabbed me i just stopped trying to fight back and i completely used all my energy to like you it was like two negatives make a positive like multi, he was like doing multiple things he was like basically when i do that i can heal my body so even though you stabbed me i was healing myself and then uh once i was fully healed i showed back up and not only that but now i have an even stronger connection with like my red my blue and then I can create purple because now I know how to use curse energy to a T basically. And then, uh, he was like, this dude is high. And he was just like, <laughs> he was, he was just, he was high on light. Like he, I feel like he was in a place of where he just felt like, bro, I have a supreme connection to the everything. Cause like he figured out, it seems like he knows exactly how curse energy works to a T. Like he's, I mean, he is the strongest, you know, sorcerer ever. Well, I'm not going to say ever, but currently he's the strongest sorcerer in the world. And I feel like he just, it just clicked. Like the switch just clicked, you know, like he's in flow state, but always in flow state. You know what I mean? Like he's always flow state and he just understands everything. And he's just like, life is just. You just it's, it's a whole different I mean, experience like, if you right now. come back alive basically i feel like yeah you probably feel kind of high but i don't even <laughs> think it's just that he survived like death i think it's just his connection with the world because you know like everything has cursed and en- technically everything has cursed energy or like some fool I, I just feel like he can feel the earth like in a different way and he's just like dude i feel like he and they had that whole thing. He was like, "I'm the chosen one." Like he feels like God or something. He was they, like on this. I, he was like on this earth. I'm the only. I'm the one that was chosen to have these two techniques, and nobody else has it. And and the light is just like shining down on him, and he's just floating in the sky. <laughs> like SpongeBob. <laughs> yeah, just floating in the sky. And then Ghetto's like, "I ain't trying to hear none of that." Basically, and he was like, "All right, let's." You know, let's let's get to it. And well, he was like, "I got something for everything you can do." Basically. Yeah, yeah. And then he was like, "Something's something's off." He was like, yeah. "Nah, this is cool. This is good." And then that's when he used purple and just fucking took his whole right side of his body out or left side of his body out. And then he was like, uh, "I don't really have anything to say, you know." Um, but I'll give you this. My son is going to be sold off to the Zenin clan. So do what you want with that information. And, uh, yeah. And then he was having like flashbacks to his, to his son. And it's weird because in that flashback, he was like, when did I start caring about what people think about me? Cause it seemed like he left the Zenin clan mainly because, you know, he had zero, no curse energy. So they probably exiled him anyway. They're like, yeah. you're useless. You can't, you know, be used. And he was like, well, if that's the case, I don't care what any of you people think. I'm just going to live my life. how I want to live it. And he had a son. But then he became like this, this like mercenary that hunts sorcerers. And it was like, how do you go from that to that? You know what I'm saying? And he's like, when did I, when did I change to trying to be something else basically? And, uh, he was like, if I, like me, usually I would have ran away from this fight. Cause I know like I have, I get nothing out of this. Like I'm not getting paid. Like it's nothing. I, like, why am I fighting you? I literally came here to kill that girl. And that was it. Like, I don't have a grudge against you, but he was like, if I could kill this dude, then I would literally crush the pinnacle. The of the YouTube YouTube world, yeah. Like basically. I would be, yeah. And so he was like, let's try it. And he fuck around and you know, he fuck around and you find out. <laughs> you know like the graph showed up the graph showed up and he was all the way on the right he was fucking around too much and he found out <laughs> he found out and so that was cool and then it had the whole that's when the ending c- came in but you know it was, it was more after and that's when i was like damn the ending like just i don't know the music the song and everything it made the whole sequence even better for me like it just all the transition was really good and then it goes to uh it goes back to ghetto because he he wakes up from being knocked out um and he's like trying to look for toji and then he uh he finds 
He finds the, the curse worm. The curse. And it's like, <laughs> mom, mommy. <laughs> and he's like, he just has a face of like anger. It's like anger and confusion. He's just like, you know, and then he yeah. absorbs it. And then he's looking, he's looking to try to find where they got, uh, what's her name's body. And, uh, then he comes across Gojo. Cause I guess it's a bunch of facilities. That's what Gojo was saying. Like it was a whole bunch of facilities. So I can see why it took you so long to get here, but yeah, it's already taken care of. I got her body. And then everybody was just cheering and clapping. I was like, what the fuck is going on? I was so on? confused. Like, I <laughs> when he opened the door. When I first watched it, I didn't think it was like a real thing. Like, I thought he was like imagining yeah. things or something. He opened the door because it was like black and red, like that was the tone. And then when he opened the door, it was like all like white, blue light. And then you just hear cheering and clapping. And then he <laughs> walks in, and then you see Gojo with uh, Rico in his arms walking out, and everybody just clapping and cheering. And then uh, Gojo's like, you know, I really don't feel anything right now. So if you want to kill all these people, we can. But if you don't, it doesn't matter to me. So just let me know. And then Ghetto was like, no, nah, it's no point. Uh, it would be pointless. You need a reason. And then Gojo's like, do you really need a reason? He was like, yeah, at the Jujutsu Sorcerer, you always need a reason. And then not only that, he was also like, uh, the higher up, like these dudes are just, you know, they're just followers. Like they didn't have any hand in this. They're just following their religion or whatever it is. Like all the higher ups who really were in charge and caused this are probably gone anyway. So it wouldn't make any sense to try to kill, you know, these, these innocent people. And then, uh, the episode just ends, but I did see, the author said when Gojo asked Ghetto that question, if he was being his moral compass in that situation, like Gojo probably would have killed all of them. If, if Ghetto wasn't there anyway, like he probably wouldn't have asked. He probably would just did it. But since Ghetto showed up, he asked him and, and based on what Ghetto was going to say is what he was going to do. And, uh, okay. I also think, I think Gojo is in the place now. Cause he's like, he feels like God. I mean, how can you not? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're the strongest person in the world. You're literally, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. He just feels, like, it's like whatever. You know, like, everything is beneath him at this point. And it's just like whatever. He was like, it's, you know, like, he was like, we can kill everybody in here. And I wouldn't feel any way. Like, it wouldn't mean more or mean less. Like, I, you know, it's whatever. I'm still confused how ghetto becomes the way he is and gojo is the way he is but i think they both are are flipping in this moment because like ghetto wanted to say yes like it was a dark shadow under him i feel like he wanted to say yes but the the jujutsu jujutsu sorcerer in him was like we can't do that you know what i mean like that's not the right thing to do and i think over time the one with the idea (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah i know i know but like if you look at how ghetto was he took a long time to answer he was thinking about it yeah it wasn't like no we can't do it it was like you know we, yeah we, we might be able yeah. <laughs> like that he didn't say that but he in his head he was like we might you know we might could low-key but he had to think about it at least that's how i feel he had to think about it so i think it's going to be a switch um and ideologies over time I don't know if there's how much more they're going to show because I feel like that was like the end of the arc, basically. You know, like everything happened. But I, I guess we got to see what happens with Tangan, too. Um, but yeah, that's it did thing. say the uh, the creator was saying Ghetto was being Gojo's moral compass for this this moment. So. But, like, but Gojo, I mean, you can say the same. Gojo was like, I don't care. Like we get we can or we can't. We we cannot you know like we can do it or we can't do it it doesn't matter to me yeah kind of turned psycho i feel like he was more so asking for him because even even when he went to go fight to- toji he was like i'm not even sad about what's her name dying like i I don't feel anything i just feel bliss like yeah that's what I'm, <laughs> I'm connected with the word that's what i'm saying like he's just <laughs> he's just like bro everything it doesn't matter like he's just he just feels like god he just turns a sociopath yeah basically uh, this episode was good. Um, my only things were, I'm not mad that Toji died, but I do feel like, damn, I was like, dang, why did Toji have to die? But it's like, yeah, that's kind of how I felt too. Cause he's such a cool character and he showed up in cool fashion and he left out in cool fashion. So you can't be mad at it. My only thing was, I don't know what they're going to do with, uh, 
Megumin or Megumi, whatever it is. Um, and his connection with his dad, obviously now because he's dead. Um, but I thought I didn't think Toji was gonna die going into this episode. I thought he was gonna live, and then maybe later on, Megumi would Connect actually meet Megumi. him. But now I see that's not gonna happen. But that's why that's why uh, Gojo takes care of him, though. Yeah, that is true. But I feel like Gojo would have taken care of him, whether he killed him or not. He opinion. would have been sold off to the Zenin clan, though. Well, I think he was going to get sold off. Well, Toji wasn't taking care of Megumi. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Like, I mean, I his mom like, was with him, though, I'm assuming, because... No, his mom wasn't either. No, oh, so who was both, just watching both him? deadbeats. Yeah. <laughs> so who was watching? His sister, right? His older sister? Yeah, like his older okay, sister, okay. basically. Like, that's all they had, I'm pretty sure, until Gojo probably came along. Yeah. Cause like yeah like, but he whoever... was going to regular school like he wasn't in the in the clan he was literally right. remember in the in last season he was at a regular school like yeah. he wasn't with Jujutsu or anything and then Gojo I'm pretty sure Gojo just showed up like hey you know who you are or this is your clan and stuff like this and would you be would you want to do this I think I think he said he joined because his sister had a curse around her or something his sister is like yeah his sister has a curse and she's just like bedridden like in a coma yeah. And he's trying to figure out how to cure it, right? What to do to stop it. Isn't that yeah. why he joined? So, I don't know what's going to happen with Megumi if he finds out anything about his dad. I don't think he even that knows Gojo killed about him. his dad. I don't think so either. I don't Besides, think he would care anyway. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> but his character probably not. Yeah. Um, but I, I, and then the other thing I'm interested in is what's going to happen with Tangan. So, I have like three different like possibilities here either he's gonna transform because we know the school is still intact and he's still there in current time so like Mm -hmm. i feel like it would be really funny if like he does transform but just like nothing happens yeah they were saying that's one of the options they were just saying the worst outcome is that he transforms and he tries to take over the world or something like that yeah but like I can see since she's dead, I could see either like somehow maybe they found another vessel. But wasn't it like the next day it was supposed to happen? Like they I think were so, yeah. To like it was a simulate. Yeah, if they don't do it now, then you know it. it I think that's I, why. I think they I had a like time frame on it. He like just evolves and like nothing happens, which would make the story even more like ironic and funny. Yeah, because all these people assimilated with him, and it's like damn. We didn't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we didn't need to do that. But, but they were saying they don't leave. It's like they become Tangan. So Tangan is like all these people combined into one thing. Okay. It's not just them taking their body. Yeah. At least that's how Rico was explaining it. She was like, when you assimilate, he was because remember Gojo was like, why do you want to do this? Or why would you want to do this anyway? Uh, you're just going to die or something like that. And he was like, and she was like, when you assimilate, you don't die. You become one with Tangan. Me and Tangan are, Tangan is me and I and, and I am him. Like, we are the same thing. And my, you know, my my memories and stuff will still be intact. But me but as a person is gone, but I'm still there. It's like weird. It's like a weird thing. It's like a, like a butterfly kind of thing. You know how, like, is the caterpillar really the butterfly anymore? You know? Because, like, in yeah. metamorphosis. But it is, like, the caterpillar is the butterfly, but the f- butterfly, you know, like, I don't know. I think that's the Get- kind of thing Ghetto it made it seem like what she was saying was kind of just, like, coping to make herself feel better Yeah, to make herself feel better. Feel better. Yeah, he was, like, she was kind of feeling that way, too. She's yeah. going to not be her. She's going to lose everything about her. She's not going to see anyone that she loves ever again. Yeah. So I don't know if, if that's the case. I, I felt it was more like a body switch type of switch thing. Switch thing. Like he just takes over the body and just keeps living through the body. But it's like, why are they, it's like, you? why are you pausing at this one phase? I know they said because they don't know what's going to happen next. But who who who's the one to say like, oh, we can't let him. Like how long ago was it like, oh, if he gets to this next stage, it, it might, you know. Like what information do they have? Yeah, to make them come to that conclusion, like if he transforms again, it could be over. Is it just because no he idea. he's gonna become so strong? Is that what it was? Like he'll be so strong that nobody can do anything if he wanted to. It was, I think it was that, and also like 
if he evolves, will he become not even him anymore? Like, will he just be a different person in general mm-hmm. who may not want to protect jujutsu society or keep up the barriers or do this job? And what if he just uses his power for something else? Or what if he just does nothing altogether? It just becomes just someone unrelated. So, I don't know. But I guess we'll see you next episode. I see there's a one-year time skip, so. <laughs> but the animation was good. Um, Gojo floating was funny. Yeah. He's just a real weirdo. I don't know how he becomes how he is now. <laughs> he said he's a, a real weirdo. <laughs> he was a weirdo during that episode. I mean, he seemed pretty much the same. He He seems more chill, but he's always been, like, eccentric. Like, even now, yeah. he seems very, you know, it's just that he was more of a a jackass when he was younger. <laughs> yeah. But now he's just, like, he's still very out there, but not as brass and mean, I guess. Because he yeah, was he's rude. He was nicer. rude. Yeah. yeah he's, I, th- I think he's the same. He's just nice instead of being mean. Like, it's the same personality, just not... In the form of meanness. And even then, he wasn't really mean. He was just rude. He would just be saying stuff, and it's like, bruh, why are you being disrespectful like this? And he's still disrespectful during fights. So, yeah. That's still thing. But those are bad guys. Yeah. They deserve disrespect. <laughs> like, I watched this one video of the dude, he, like, voiced over him fighting, like, the volcano head guy. Mm hmm. And it was really funny because he was saying, like, this is one of the most disrespectful fights, like, in anime. And he was saying, like, he came and, like, beat him up. And then he, like, went all the way back to where Yuji was and then brought him back so he could watch. And then he started beating him up again. And then he let him do his ultimate move. And then he covered it with his own ultimate move. And yeah. Him. We didn't kill him, but he almost killed him. Yeah. <laughs> he really he absorbed his imminent domain with his own. <laughs> domain expansion. Um, what is this? Oh, yeah. Um. I don't got any pictures to go with Zom 100. Oh, that's cool. This one's fresh. Like, I, we, yeah. we, you, yeah, we both just watched this. This episode was really funny. It was cool. He got a lot done. He got, what, three things done, four things done on his bucket list. What was the other three things? Besides remember, he wine was and like, dine. wine and dine, uh, flight attendant, but he also wanted to just get on it, have a date, too. I guess that's technically a date. I don't know if okay. he counts that as well, but, and he got his TV, um, <laughs> his 8K. 80 true. inch display He's TV. Call of Duty Black Ops <laughs> zombies. <laughs> <laughs> so it starts with them on the rooftop. They're having like a summer, like an outdoor, indoor home picnic kind of thing. The dude's cooking and he's like, uh, he's like, dang, this rice is good. What's in here? And he's like, uh, I use this other, this, this ingredient. And then he was like, um, he's like, oh, okay. And he was like, what made you want to become a comedian or whatever? And he was like, I just wanted to become a comedian, you know, that's something I always wanted to do. And then he was like, uh, on his, you know, writing on his bucket list and he was like, a wage slave. <laughs> he's like, what do you, he was like, what are you writing? He was like, Oh, let me add stuff to this. And he was like, no, that's my list. And he was like, you saved me. So we should do it together. And he was like, all right, Kinchuro or whatever. That's his name, right? Kinchuro, Akira and Kinchuro. Yeah. And then, uh, so he was like, all right, let's go Kinchuro. get this TV. They left to go get the TV. They show up at the the electric store, and then it's a huge traffic jam of just cars. And then there's a zombie firefighter with a freaking fire hose that's shooting, <laughs> shooting fire, fire out. <laughs> 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 and then a, a, a gas truck Wait, was it comes before out. that when the zombie farted? Like yeah, yeah, he was looking was down because he's like, I want to have a date. He was like, I want to be on it. I want to get a date. And he was like, dude, you can't cook. You'll never get a date. He was like, what? I'm going to get a date today. And then he looked down. Kinchiro looked down to just try to see, like, who are you going to? He was going to be like, who are you going to date? Everybody's a zombie. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there's nobody here. And then the zombie just, like, fell on the ground, bent over, and just started farting. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, good luck with that. And then uh, the intro starts, and then that's when they leave to go to uh, get the TV they're on the highway, and it's blocked off. And he's like, dang, we were so close. It's literally right there. Whoever knew it would be this hard to get a TV. And then a freaking gas truck comes barreling down the, the highway. <laughs> and he's like, if we don't move, we're going to die because the firefighter has electricity. And they got, 
you know, gas and or not electricity, fire, gas and fire, big explosion. He drives away. He gets in the subway, like the under. It's not a subway. It's like the underground portion of the mall, which is like looks pretty cool. Like that. That seems pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie. Like if you're just walking around and I've mm-hmm. never seen anything like Maybe that. Maybe they have like those at, in Japan. In Japan, yeah, like underground parts where like there's stores, outlet stores and stuff. Cause that was pretty cool. But they get down there. They see a little gate open. They slide through. It's three girls and a dude. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't even give us a background on him but they're all flight attendants we come to find out and they're all panicking they're like what are you to be happy about it's nothing but zombies around us and they're like are you guys infected and they're like no we're not infected and Conchero's trying to like cheer them up and then they're like you know it's good we're in a you know a convenience store it's a bunch of food like we're not going to die we're pretty much safe like we can stay here for a while and the zombies will probably just walk away anyway after a little bit and then they're like, all right, let's get some drinks. They got some food. They start sitting down and they're just drinking and eating. And then they're like, where you um, where you come from? Like, where are you from? And they're like, oh, we just got back from LAX. Uh, we stopped. Yeah. And they're like, does this mean that you guys are, uh, <laughs> are you guys flight attendants? I don't think they added. They're like, yeah, we're, who f- like, do you happen to be flight attendants? They're like, yeah, we are. And then they just lit up and they look at each other and like, oh, snap. And they're like, it also feels like we're kind of whining and dining right now. And so his, his one thing on his bucket list is happening. And then, uh, he's like, all right, well, you know, I got to make the most of it. I can't, you know, screw this up. And the first thing he asks is, does, do you have a girl or a boyfriend? Yeah. And she's like, are you he's really like, asking, are you really asking me? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, no, I just fumbled. And then Kinchuro's like, you know, he's super, He he's good with ladies. He's good looking. So he's just like, it's a two man, but it's really a one man. Like he's going, his, his date is Yeah, like he looks at the other dude fine. too. The other dude is yeah. just like in his own <laughs> space. In like. his own space, just, yeah, freaking out. And then he was like, Kinchuro, don't don't just, you know, leave me alone. Help me. And then he looks up and he's like, oh, no, I'm I'm sucking right now. Like it's it's falling through. And uh, he's like, you know what? I'm just going to drink this whole bottle of tequila because why not? And I guess prove that he has the most guts or whatever out of anybody here, which is like, why would you do that? Like that would probably weird him out even more. Scaring the hoes. <laughs> scaring the hoes. You scared the hoes. You scared the hoes. <laughs> so he got up and he started just, you know, chugging his bottle of tequila. And he was like, after that, the uh, the night or the, the dinner or whatever got a lot better and everything went super good. And then, um. And this dude gets naked and started dancing around. <laughs> yeah, doing his little joke, his naked bit. And then he went to the bathroom. Akira went to the bathroom because he's throwing up because he just drank a whole bottle of tequila. And then the girl shows up and rubs his back and. He's like, uh, why did you um, why did you come and check on me? And she was like, oh, because, you know, you just really went out there and, and went crazy. And he's like, yeah, that is true. That makes sense. And then um, she was like, or I think he asked again, right? He was like, you never answered if you did have it. Or she was like, you know, by the way, you asked me, I actually do have a boyfriend. And then he was like, yeah. oh, his he's heart like, sunk. Hey. He was like, at least it was good while it lasted. Yeah, at least it was good <laughs> while it lasted. <laughs> and then uh, then it cuts back to Kinchiro, and they're like, oh, his bed's up here. And he got to it straight away. Like, <laughs> it was instantly. <laughs> he got to it. And then um, the girl was complaining. She was like, I shouldn't have took this job or something like that. Like, I'm exhausted and I'm tired. And then the zombie, the guy turned into a zombie. He's just sitting there in a the fetal position. And she's, like, complaining about her job. And then he freaking turns into a zombie and then bites her on the coochie. <laughs> yeah. <he's... laughs> turned into a munch. <laughs> yeah, turned into a munch. And then she turned into a zombie too. But her zombie form, she was like super athletic and crazy. Yeah, strong. she was like fast. I was like, I was like we got to run her. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, that's when they hear the scream. And he's like, you know, you should go check on that. And she was like, no, we can just go another round, can't we? We can check about it, you know, worry about it later. And he was like, no, I think we should. And then she just, you know, was like, no, nah, we're going to do this. And he was like, all right, whatever, I guess. And then they were sitting on the stairs, uh, Akira and the other girl were sitting on the stairs and just, like, talking about what's going on, like, why they picked their jobs and what their dreams are. And, you know, it was a good moment, a really good moment. And then Kinchiro goes downstairs and he has to... Not can, yeah, he goes downstairs because after, you know, they did what they did, they're like, hey, Rika, I think her name was Rika, right? Or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, Rika. he was like, Rika, are you okay? And then she was a zombie, 
And then he was like, oh, snap. And then she ran up and bit the other girl. And then he got the suitcase and smacked her in the head and killed her. Even though she's a zombie, I don't think he really killed her. She was, like, shivering and shaking on the on the ground. <laughs> After he, like, knocked her. He's like, I killed her. Even though she was a zombie, I killed her. And then uh, that's when the, it went back to Akira <laughs> and what's her name Akira. talking. And um, as yeah. we're talking and having this moment, the guy, the first guy that turned to a zombie is walking down the steps and just bites the girl on her neck and then she was also talking about like not liking her job sometimes yeah. and like this was funny to me because like she said an old man called her a flying waitress <laughs> that was really funny oh they said they said that in the uh in the anime too yeah it said that okay okay so he calls a bunch of flying waitresses i mean um... that's what they are <laughs> i mean is that disrespectful you're a waitress you're just in the air <laughs> Is that what they are? Is that what flight attendants are? Is that are? not what it is? A flight attendant? I guess they what does a waitress do, do that? What does a waitress do? I mean, they just bring water, bring food. Yeah, food, yeah. I guess that is <laughs> mostly. It just sounds funny. Um, but yeah, wasn't she just talking about how, like, did she actually like being a flight attendant? Or... Yeah, she was like, uh, the reason I became a flight, she was like, when I was rubbing you on your back, oh, yeah, it reminded yeah. me of when I first, took, you know, on my very first flight, I was having a really bad time, but the flight attendant came to me and, and rubbed me on my back and made me feel better. And ever since that day, my dream was to become a flight attendant, which is like very childish. Like I can see a kid saying, <laughs> oh, this person made me, but as you get older, you kind of realize like. I want to be no goddamn flight attendant. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> but, do you have anything like that? No, I don't have anything like that. I didn't even know I was going to have a job I got right now. I was just like, I don't know. My whole life is just go with the flow. You know what I mean? I just, whatever ha- happens to happen, happens. You know? And yeah. It just happened. So, like, for me, I don't really have, like, a huge dream or nothing like that. Or some moment where I was like, I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? Like, or somebody did something and I seen them in a position. I'm like, that's something I would want to do. You know? So. I feel like the only moment I can think of is just... When I was younger, I would go around, like, when I got a phone that could record, I would, like, record myself, like, narrating things or, like, describing uh-huh. things that were happening, like, in the park and stuff like that. And that's, like, the only time I could think of that would um, be, like, a precursor to, like, this. Uh-huh. But besides that, I, don't, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. Um, and then she gets eaten. Or she didn't get eaten eaten <laughs> she got bit and then she got back up and she was like it's okay just run and then the dude hopped back up and then finished her off which is like weird he turned her to a zombie and then she i don't know like why do zombies do that like they turn somebody into a zombie right they either eat them fully or they turn them into a zombie but they don't usually eat each other after that yeah she got turned to a zombie and then the dude well, hopped back up and st- I don't, she wasn't like fully a zombie yet. Yeah. Like she knew she was gonna turn into a zombie. Yeah. But usually they I feel like they just bite once and then they turn into a zombie. To really a zombie fast. right away. Yeah. But this guy also probably took a while to turn into a zombie. Yeah, because he was he had that bite for a minute and he was just hiding it. So maybe it just depends. If you're on ever your... in the zombie apocalypse and you're the person to get bit and hide it from the rest of the group. You hell. deserve worse than death. Lower hell. <laughs> like, I you hate deserve those worse than They're death. in every scenario, aren't they? Like, yeah, it's like, bro, it's like, bro, you're going to die, bro. Why are you going to take everybody with you? Just, like, why are just, you hiding that you were bit? That's yeah, <laughs> like, just go about your day, bro. Just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Lead a group or let us know and we'll, you we'll know. We'll kill you. I yeah. Guess. Those people always be in there. And then when they actually took the TV, that was funny, too. Yeah, he was like, because he was TV. crying. He was crying, too. And he was like, hey, I got a TV. And he was like, <laughs> you're the best. And he just, like, completely rubbed off all his tears. And they hopped on the bike and just drove back. And he went back to playing the game. Uh, that was funny. But that was sad, though. I definitely felt for the girl. I thought that she was going to live. Honestly. Yeah, I thought they were going to survive. And that was going to be, like, his... his uh. I don't know. His like, new love interest. His new kinda. love interest. But I think it's really just the girl the girl that he saw, that's who it's gonna be. That's who's that I think that's the that's gonna be his dream girl. Because it's like I wanna find my dream girl. He didn't cross it off yet, but I think they're gonna run into each other again and that's gonna be who he feels like it is. Okay. Remember my childhood dream. 
Yeah, and that was at the end. So I wonder what that that is. What do you think his childhood dream is? Um, probably to be free. <laughs> Aaron type beat. <laughs> to be free. <laughs> yeah, probably to be free. Like no responsibilities, can just do whatever he wants. Maybe, maybe it's more to it. I'm trying to think. I mean, we really don't know much about his past besides he played rugby. Rugby and went to college, and his dream job was to be a production in a production company. Maybe it's the so. big movie. He needs to be a director or something. Yeah. I don't know. But all right. That's all we got. All these shows I just watched today besides Jujutsu. I watched that the day of. Huh. And it was weird because I feel like everyone, not everyone, but there was like a lot of bleach hype on social media oh, for this episode. I don't know if it was specifically for this episode, but like I, I thought rushed... last episode was better. Was last episode better? I feel like this episode was better. Last episode. What happened last it was, episode? It was when they got the hollow pills and they changed the oh, fight around. Okay. But yeah, then at the end, they got bamboozled and y'all, which was like, you guys don't realize what you did. You finally took those Bankais back, <laughs> and now you upped us yeah. another level, and then all the crosses just shoot up out the sky. <laughs> That's what I like about Bleach. That's what I was trying to say about Aizen. It's like every time you think they had the best of them, he was like, well, actually, I saw this coming. <laughs> and he always had something, and it was always so funny. Um, but I think I like this episode better, even though I don't really like um, Doggy. I don't really like he's okay in the story, but I did like that he got his little moment. Um, but he's had he's had some other moments throughout the story. Um, but what was your episode of the week? Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. Let's say hmm. episode of the week. Episode of the week. It was hmm. It's it's tough. It's between Jujutsu and Zom for me. Cause I did really like Zom and the girl at the end. I was just sad that she died, but it was also cool that I can never tell in the show who's gonna live or die. Yeah. So I, I like to. I thought the that. other girl was gonna be the one that that uh gives him a chance. The one that got turned into a zombie first. Okay. Cause she was like. Drink it up, go for more. Like, she was like, ah, this dude's impressive. After he drank all the tequila. Yeah. I thought, like, maybe that was going to be a thing, but no. She was just, nah, I she don't was know. Sad. <laughs> <laughs> not like a Not like a long-lasting thing, but just like, you know, she would be the one to let him have a date and have a good time and stuff like that. <laughs> he was going to beat. <laughs> nah, nah. I don't think that. I don't think that's his character. His, that's not his character. You don't think he'll ever? You don't think he'll ever? Uh, I don't know. The way the show is, he might. It might have. A, he might get a scene like that. Cause I didn't expect what they showed after they showed it in the bed and stuff. Like what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> like I didn't know the show was like that. Like I wasn't expecting <laughs> anything like that. Like maybe they showed it off screen, but they actually showed like the the girl kind of naked and stuff. And I was like, oh wow. True. I mean, they I also showed that. the. Well, they didn't show it, but imply the. Uh lady in the first episode like the sister oh yeah the assistant in the yeah mistress or whatever yeah yeah (laughs) with the uh (laughs) the company the head of the company or the ceo or whatever yeah so so yeah so i don't know he might he might i think my episode week was zom but i think jujutsu was very close um for animation of the week i definitely jujutsu yeah same kaizen for me um, and then moment of the week, there were a lot of funny moments slash good moments this week. Um, in Jujutsu, when Gojo comes back and he's just like weird and floating and stuff, that was a good moment. Yeah. Um, and then he was upside down and he used the red. Yeah. Um, and then... And Zom, when the zombie was farting, and then yeah, when they were excited about the flight too. attendant. And so there's a lot of moments in Zom that were really funny. Um, and then in Roroni Kenshin, when the dude dressed up like the bandit guy, that was a little funny moment as well. Yeah. Bleach. And then Bleach. Bleach, when he turned back into a dog, 
Or when he took his helmet off and he was a human. I was like, what the heck? Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the heck? I, I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, but what was the moment of the week? It's probably For Gojo. Me, it would have to be Gojo, yeah. Gojo. Showing back up. That whole sequence of events. Yeah, man. Him floating yeah. in the, the light just beaming down, golden on him. Just like... <laughs> I am the one chosen by the heavens. Yeah. I feel like, um, I don't know. I'm just really excited. I am excited for the next episode of Jujutsu. Probably the most. Because I really want to know what's going to happen. Is there, is, yeah. is there a I think next it's two episode? More. I think there's two more. And then it's going Before to go on break. break. Which is kind um, of annoying. It is. But... If it's good, I guess I'll care a little bit less, but it it will kind of throw us off. Um, I mean, besides that, predictions for Zom. What was the next one called? Uh, Hero of the Dead. Oh, I I I don't I don't see the titles of the next episode. So this Hero of the Dead, he might meet the guy, the waitress, or the uh, The host, host. the host guy. Yeah, they might run across each other. Part of me feels like he'll never show up again. Really? Thing. You think he's just? I don't know. That was just that one thing, that one shot thing. I feel like he'll be a part of it because I feel like the other girl's gonna show back up too. Yeah, she. I feel like she'll show up because, like in the in the preview, I thought that one of these girls was gonna be the other girl that's mm-hmm. like in the intro of the show, but she's like a blonde girl. So it might. It probably. Well, I know it's none of them now. But I don't know when she's gonna show up. So I guess we'll see. Yeah. And then Bleach. I think I already set my predictions for that. Yeah, same. I said mine as well. Jujutsu. Um. Aftermath of Tengen. I I I think Tengen's just gonna be a regular guy. <laughs> I don't yeah, think I, think, gonna I don't think he's gonna change. I think he'll just keep doing what he's doing. And as far as Ghetto and Gojo go, I just have no idea how they turn into what they are today. Like, I have no semblance of an idea. Um, and what's the other show? Kenshin? They're just going to yeah. continue their fight, I assume. Yeah, I think that, they'll finish your fight, um, and then they'll become Kenshin friends. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all I got. You got anything else? No, nah, that's it for me, too, man. All right. Um, well, this is Weekend Weaves, episode 37. Um, that's all we got. Like, subscribe, share, whatever, follow. Sorry, I'm sick. I'm kind of out of it. But uh, peace out. <laughs> <laughs>